Okay. Hello everyone. Magandang hapon po. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng sumali sa amin ngayong um, hapon na ito. Sige, let's just wait for some people to start viewing our video. Sige, let's wait for a few minutes. Viewers. Yeah. Yes. So, so good afternoon po. Good afternoon everyone. I hope everyone is safe. And uh, let's stay safe and um, make sure na we follow the guidelines that we have uh, by the government. government. Um, and or I, I know that everyone is excited um, na to know more um, kung ano yung mga pag-usapan natin dito sa forum natin. And all the parents, all the students, and even the administration administrators have some questions. Um, on how are we, or, or how do we go about um, moving education to um, forward pagdating po ng next school year. So aside yeah. from the guidelines that we have from uh, Department of Education, um, this forum would pretty much cater dun sa mga questions natin um, from different stakeholders, right, uh, Mikaela, para maliwanagan or ma-enlighten yung mga audience natin on how um, schools are preparing for online distance learning. Yes, tama ka doon, Sly. Um, alam ko nga, marami talagang hanggang ngayon, marami pa rin questions about online distance learning. Siyempre, lahat tayo first time talaga to go yes. through this. Yes, I agree. And go through this together. Lahat po tayo um, kailangan pagdaanan ito. Kaya po tayo nagkaroon ng forum ngayon para po bigyan kayo ng um, real life experiences from our stakeholders ngayon. Um, yeah. One from the uh, private school and one from the public school para lahat po tayo makarelate um, kung ano po ang context tong mas applicable sa atin, mapag-uusapan po natin sa hapon na ito. So ngayon, meron tayong 92 to viewers. Hello po. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for participating or viewing this uh, forum and we hope that you would learn more um, about online distance learning and yung mga doubts po natin that we have for this coming school year hopefully um, ma-overcome po natin yun after this yes right Sige, Mikaela pakilala muna tayo sir Sly yeah so, sure yes yes no, mauna na ako so this event uh, um, first and foremost is um, brought to you by Nuwadu, um, an online assessment platform, and Big Pan Enterprises, a local authorized distributor of Nuwadu in the Philippines. So, ako po si Micaela Ramos. Ako po ang general manager ng Big Pan Enterprises. And together with me is Sir Sylvester Escobia, or Sly for short, who is the country representative of Nuwadu, Philippines. Yes, so, uh, thank you. So Yes, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, it's okay. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for that um, introduction. And again, good afternoon, everyone. So I hope that everyone will stay tuned uh, from the start up until the end of the forum para po lahat ng information or lahat ng details na kailangan natin to prepare for the next school year uh, makuha po natin. Yes, yes. Um, I'm sure marami na excited. Um, pwede, pwede ba tayong magkaroon ng onting audience participation? Um, siguro, baka pwede na kayong mag-post, um, our dear participants, kung ano ang mga ina-expect nyo to know this afternoon para mag-guide din po kami ni Sir Sylvester kung ano ang gusto nyong malaman at may tanong right. natin sa mga bisita ngayong hapon. Yes, tama. That's that's very nice. If kung meron po kayong questions or may mga worries about this coming school year, you may uh, put it in the comments box para po uh, makita namin and then we'll do our best to um, attend to your um, comment or your query. Yes. Um, siguro let's wait just uh, one more minute para makahabol lang ang iba nating viewers. Yes, shout out tayo muna. Uh, Sir Sly, you can see the comments po on your... Yes, um, yes, I can see it, yep. Yes, so we have um, Miss Jean Boris watching from Abuyog, Leyte. Maraming salamat po. 
Um, sino pa? We have Sir Dustin Hoston um, watching from SDO San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. Hello po. Good afternoon. Yes. Sige po. If you have um, questions that you want us to, answer, uh, to ask our um, dear guests this afternoon, um, feel free to type in in our comment box. And we will try our best to ask them later on. Yes, okay. Um, let's just check if sir, um, our speakers are here. Okay, okay. So, sige, I'm sure ma excited na ba kayo? I'm sure marami na excited. We have 194 viewers as of um, right now. Yes, okay. So, um, sige, sir, say, ano na? Yeah, we can, I guess, yeah, well, let's begin. <laughs> excited na sila. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Actually, so, excited na rin ako eh. So. <laughs> right, that's good. Ako rin. rin. Marami akong gusto itanong sa ating mga guests ngayon. So, unahin ko na ang ating uh, introduce ang guests natin uh, representing the private schools. No, um, I will present first um, Philippine Women's College of Davao representing the private schools uh, in the Philippines. Um, together with, uh, um, here with us this afternoon is um, Professor Vicente Antonio Vallejo Pijano III. He is the Vice President of Academics, uh, Administration and Institutional Development of PwC Davao. He is the President of the Association of Private and State Colleges um and universities of region 11 and he is also the incoming president of Davao colleges and universities network or mas kilala sa pangalan na Dakuwood. okay so miss uh, professor pihano was educated in the united states with uh, with undergraduate degrees in computer science and psychology human relations major and he also graduated magna cum laude. He earned his terminal degree with an MS in telecommunications from Pace University in a joint program with IBM and the Quran Institute of Mathematical Sciences in New York City. His areas of expertise are academic administration, curriculum program planning, development, um, e-learning, institutional capacity building, enterprise resource management and automation, finance and administration, international development co cooperation, faculty and staff development, and quality assurance. He is the team leader and lead consultant in the Delft University's um, international development cooperation project funded by the Dutch government European Union, ADB, and the World Bank. He also served as a consultant for the PDIC as chair of its Quality Assurance Board and in UCPB as a special assistant to the chairman of the board, overseeing various core banking automation projects. So um, next, or under his leadership, we have Miss um, Colleen Andy Labor, a teacher, a grade 8 science teacher from Philippine Women's College of Davao. We also have with us this afternoon the mother and daughter tandem or mother and student tandem, Mommy Gurley and Fatima Nicole Tumapig, also from PWC Davao. Sir Sly? Yes, and uh, we also um, representing our the public sector. Um, we have the mother and daughter tandem of Mommy Catherine and uh, student Darin Catrisa Santos. And um, representing uh, the public sector as well, um, we have Mr. Charlie Falobaer, um, principal of Pasig City Science High School. So, um, Sir Charlie is. Um, one of the is our panelists, uh, our panelists or Sir Charlie completed his master's degree in mathematics education from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. 
He also took graduate level course in Singaporean math teaching from Marshall Cavendish Institute and a certificate course in family life education from the University of Asia and the Pacific. He is now finishing his doctorate um, degree in educational leadership and management at the Consolacion University, Philippines. He has research papers presented in Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam focusing on education technology, parent education, and math intervention program. He is among the top notchers. He actually ranked first in the National Capital Region and fifth in the national level during the 2018 National Qualification ex Qualifying Examination for School Heads or the Principal's Test. He is a second stage passer of the Career Executive Service Eligibility Examination. Our speaker is currently serving as the school head of Pasig City Science High School. Yes, thank you. Next. Next is um, teachers from Pasig City Science High School. We have Ms. or Ma'am Maricar Oriarte, the head teacher, and Ms. Marie Chris Morillo. Yes. Uh, thank you, Sir Slide. Just to add, no, Ms. Marie Chris Morillo is our um, is a science high school Filipino teacher, and Ms. Maricar Oriarte is a Nihongo teacher. Oh, Nihongo teacher, and he she is also. Um, appointed as the head teacher at mm. Pasig City Science High School. So a very interesting lineup today. And um, actually, we have another special guest. Um, to, uh, joining us this afternoon is Ms. Candice and Vito Evangelista of CCAT Learning and Review Center. So just to give a bit brief background about the mother-son uh, mother tandem, um, Ms. Candice Evangelista is an education entrepreneur uh, and a mother of two, and Vito is actually her youngest. Um, she is the co-founder of CCAT Learning a Review and Tutorial Center that runs eTutor Champs. So, and Vito, uh, on the other hand, is an incoming grade 7 at the Ateneo de Zamboanga University. Uh, he is also a student at CCAT Learning. And he has also undergone the, the program, each tutor chats um, under CCAT Learning. So Vito enjoys anime, video games, and cooking. So later on, we will be talking to him uh, together with the other students. All right, I'm sure um, all of you are excited. Um, let's see ano ang sinasabi ng ating mga manonood. Yes, may mga, mga, mga from Davao na nanonood from Philippine Women's College of Davao supporting, of course, their um, school. Hello po, welcome, welcome. Yeah, welcome um, po sa inyo. Welcome. And from Pasig City Science High School, of course, meron din tayong mga manonood from, from there. Welcome po. Okay, without further ado, let us welcome first our school administrators um, um, to our screen, Mr. Charlie Fababaer and Mr. Vicente Pijano III. Yes. Hi, Sir Charlie. Hi, Hi good Sir afternoon, Sir Charlie. Good afternoon, Sir Tito. Um, Nakamute lang yan. Nakamute po kayo, Sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Um, yes. Yeah, yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sir Charlie. Good afternoon, Professor Pihano. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon um, for um, um, accommodating our request to join us for a short interview with you. So, una, una po, sir, um, alam po natin na, yes, we are going through the online distance learning. Yun na po ang plano natin for the coming school year. Um, may we ask po how is um, PwC, how has PwC prepared for the online distance learning? Um, Unang-una, yung aming mga paghahanda ay nag-umpisa mga uh, buwan ng Marso. No? Yung, kasi nagsuspecha na kami nung time na yon 
na baka pang matagalan yung mga lockdown. So ang unang ginawa uh, ng kolehiyo is nag-prepare ng isang dalawang dalawang klase ng plano. Yung una is yung business continuity plan at yung pangalawa is the learning continuity plan. Uh, basically ay yung mga planong yun ay nakasaad yung mga paghahanda kung sakaling magkaroon nga ng abriya at hindi kaagad malutasan yung at that time hindi pa natin sigurado na siya ba ay talagang pandemya. Uh, so nagkaroon na ng mga usap-usapan at mga paghahanda. Uh, ang pinakamalaki ko on was uh, yun nga ang pinag-aralan kung paano namin kasi nung nag-lockdown eh tuloy-tuloy pa yung mga klase. Patapos pa lang yung elementarya at ang high school. Uh, in fact, yung college namin ay eh, kakaumpisa pa lang. Uh, yun ay prelim pa nung nagumpisa. Kaya ang ginawa namin at that time was to really come up with a stopgap measure uh, para batugunan yung mga pag-aaral ng mga bata. We opted not to, to cut the schooling of the college level uh, but rather continued on and converted to online. Kaya ang ginawa namin, ipinaghanda yun. And then, inumpisahan na rin namin yung mga pagpaplano kung ano na nga ang gagawin. So, we, we basically had a lead time of about uh, two months no? uh, because we were really preparing for the worst. We were mm-hmm. hoping for the best, but we were preparing for the worst. Mm-hmm. Uh, sir, to clarify, no, you came up with the business continuity plan and learning continuity plan even before DepEd recommended um, yes. to come up with one. Uh, we've always had uh, a business continuity plan. Uh, alam mo, ang nagpahanda kasi sa amin sa Dabao, kung natatandaan ninyo, nung mga nakaraang taon, nagkaroon ng mga malalakas na paglindol. So, inihanda namin yung kaukulang preparasyon ng eskwelahan kasi nga uh, we were hit by earthquakes, uh, quite large ones uh, in the region itself. So, in terms of business continuity, meron na. It was just a tweaking of it. Uh, the learning continuity plan, there were already semblance of it. But it did not yet have all the necessary element, which includes now the flexible learning approach. No? So, naandun na siya. Uh, kasi nga, napaka-importante ang planning eh, uh, sa, sa isang pag-address ng particular na problema or kahit na hindi pa siya problema, mas mabuti yung naghahanda na Ganun ang aming, that's the policy eh, because I, uh, the nature of my work is that I am uh, I am an institutional capacity builder which is really a, a kanyan, planner ang, ang essence yan. Mm-hmm. That's what I do uh, for a living uh, even for uh, mm-hmm. I came back to uh, academia. So yes, definitely um, kumbaga it was easier dahil nga the plans were in place already. Yes. Uh, ang, yes lang, uh, ang, ang, ang ginawa namin, uh, tinailor made namin yung plano kasi nga, mukhang napansin namin nung mga Marso, Abril, mukhang hindi ito mawawala ng mabilis. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. ang, ang ginawa actually, dinagdagan yung mga plano para we are, ano to, kinakalibrate namin yun. Uh, but, but to tell you honestly, uh, up to now, we, everything is 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 flexible because ah uh, hindi natin alam po lang kung kasiguro naman yung mga mga sitwasyon eh. So the the ability, the rule of the game now is flexibility. No? Yeah. And I've always right. told our people that everyone has to be flexible. Uh, flexibility is important, but even more important is also the ability to ah uh, yung yung kakayahan natin na mag-adjust. Napaka-importante. Yes. Kung tayo ay napaka-rigid sa ating pag-iisip at sa ating uh, pagpaplano, hindi mo pwedeng planuhin ang bagay na hindi mo alam na nakikita yung katapusan. E sa totoo na ngayon, wala pa tayong nakikita ang katapusan. Eh. So, 
best effort lang talaga ito sa lahat, sa magulang, sa eskwelahan, sa DepEd, sa gobyerno. Eh wala naman ho sa kabuhayan natin ngayon in our lifetime na nagkaroon ng pandemya. This is the first uh, global pandemic, so to speak. So, so napakahirap pong planuhin. So importante para sa lahat, sa buong komunidad, sa lahat ng mamamayan, na tayo ay maging flexible. No? Because when you are inflexible, then that's when the trouble comes. No? Kailangan konting gabayan, tulungan. Yan ang, ang dapat ng uh, unflexibility and a bit uh, uh, we must be able to adjust. Adjustment is a very important factor now. Hindi lang na mga eskwelahan but more important sa mga bata, sa mga magulang, sa mga nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno, sa mga nagtatrabaho sa, sa private sector. E konting, bigyan natin ng konting palugit ang isa't isa. Uh, kasi This is all new to all of us, eh. So, kumbaga, let's be kind to ourselves, no? Yes. <laughs> let's, give, let's give each other some 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 leeway, no? To to make mistakes, to to have some sa kahit na hindi agad na aaksyon na natutugunan yung mga pangangailangan. Uh, sinabi ko nga when when I talk to, I've had now two or three conversations sa mga magulang. I do a general assembly with our parents precisely because I want to tell them na kailangan we are in this together sabay-sabay tayong umapak at kumilos papunt forward no moving forward kasi hindi namin kaya kami lang to mag-isa dapat sabay-sabay tayo mga magulang at mga bata pati yung eskwelahan at lahat ng mga guro yes, uh, yes. we agree no slide Yes, I definitely agree. And then, um, I think one of the takeaways na um, nakuha ko based on the statement from um, Sir Tito is that yung BCP, um, even if it's um, a general BCP, dapat meron na tayo, right, when it comes to school admins. And then we can just adjust it depending on the um, needs, kung ano man yung, like, Right now, we have the COVID-19. So if the, like yung sa PWC, uh, I, I believe right now, my opinion is that they are really ready kasi meron na silang general BCP which they just needed to adjust pag nung dumating yung COVID-19, which is a very, very good um, insight to have or for the other schools or the other admins to follow. Then yun nga tulad ni, um, ng sinabi ni Sir Tito na um, I would, uh, or in my opinion, I would say right now meron tayong trial and error. Eh. Even sa guidelines nung, um, from DepEd, like um, right now, um, if I'm not mistaken, the latest um, DO that they have released is the DO13 and I'm... I heard that they are still uh, making some amendments to make sure na the needs of the learners in school and the students and even the teachers are ay natutugunan uh, or matutugunan this coming school year. Yes, tama, tama. Um, now, can we um, hear naman po from Sir Charlie? Pa, uh, gusto rin po namin malaman, Sir, paano naman po nakapaghanda ang Pasig City Science High School na para sa um, online distance learning. Good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon sa mga naka-tune in dito sa ating uh, uh, webinar. No? Uh, well, actually, um, halos pareho lang din naman nung preparation siguro nila uh, Professor uh, Pihano no? na we started with the learning continuity plan. Siguro ang difference lang uh, dito sa public school system natin is we have to wait um, the the directives no coming from the central office um mm. down to the division office kasi um yung, yung plan na ginagawa namin sa school level ay naka-depend no naka-anchor doon sa learning continuity plan na binubuo ng uh, ng central office so actually um even without the 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 basic education learning continuity plan or the final basic education uh, learning continuity plan Um, galing sa central office ang Pasig City Science High School ay nag-start na rin ng uh, deliberation we tried to get the perspectives of uh, different sectors like we had a meeting with uh, the head teachers with other school personnel and also uh, meron kami mga meetings um, in the past 
with the officers of the um, uh, Parent Teacher Association and our um, school governing council. Okay, so ju just to get another perspective, how to 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 really uh, move forward, no, and despite this uh, crisis of emergency in education. But of course, uh, we are. Um, we are no. We, we have the same uh, perspective with the secretary. Now the education must continue um, despite the, um, the 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 crisis or the the limitations. No, that we have um, right now because of the circumstances. Thank you, sir. Um, my follow-up question is um, ano po? Sa tingin niyo po, po ba, gaano ka-importante ang suporta ng iba't ibang stakeholders na education, lalo na gobyerno, parent, teachers, sa pagiging uh, successful, so to say, ng online distance learning plans po ninyo? Well, it's very, ano, it's very, very important. Um, in fact, no, one of the principles uh, in our learning continuity plan is collaboration, Okay. So, kasi parang, uh, I think, I think uh, this is the time more than ever that we need to collaborate with each other. We need to help each other. Sabi nga namin, parang kailangan talagang ibalik natin yung bayanihan spirit, no? Uh, dahil, uh, dahil sa totoo lang, uh, lahat tayo ay uh, na-surprise, no? Dito sa, dito sa COVID-19, dito sa pandemic na to. And um, uh, ngayon, uh, tayong lahat ay uh, talagang inaasahan na magtulong-tulong uh, magbigay ng support no uh, lahat ng uh, internal stakeholders natin external stakeholders natin para maitawid natin yung education that um, our learners really deserve okay so napaka importante so uh, we're just ano so lucky probably in Pasig City because we have um, a very supportive uh, local government uh, unit and of course yung mga division of officials natin they're very supportive uh, just to make sure no that uh, um, may handa namin ng mabuti yung uh, lahat ng uh, kakailanganin namin before the school opening at masustain ito kapag nag-start na talaga yung pasokan natin. Tama po. Sir, can you share some some concrete examples on how you were supported by either the government or any groups po uh, sa Pasig sa Empire School? Well, uh, siguro naman ano, um, a lot of people are uh, so aware no dun sa uh, dun sa pronouncement ng aming uh, city mayor si Mayor uh, Tito Soto that uh, the city government will be providing um, uh, laptops and uh, tablets no sa lahat ng uh, estudyante sa sa ano sa Pasig City, right? So and that includes Pasig City Science High School. Um, uh, may, may mga ano, may mga most or majority of the students will be receiving tablets. And then uh, sa Pasig Science at yung ibang mga schools, uh, some of our students will receive, ano, uh, will be provided with uh, laptops. Kasi uh, for example, in our school, meron kasi kaming mga uh, subjects no, na, na programming, robotics, na kailangan talaga ay laptop yung gamitin at hindi tablet. So our students will be uh, receiving uh, laptops. No? And um, the division office uh, has been so proactive then, kasi... Um, alam naman natin no, na, na hindi enough na meron kang gadget. Okay? Ultimately, kailangan natin ng quality learning uh, contents or quality learning materials. So ang effort naman na ginagawa ng division office uh, with the help of the teachers, um, school um, um, officials, uh, division officials, um, inihahanda natin mabuti yung mga learning materials na ilalagay natin doon sa tablet. Ayan. And syempre, uh, meron din tayong mga ano, meron din tayong mga external partners na tumutulong para um, i-support no yung ating effort na uh, ma-prepare talaga lahat uh, before the school opening. So andiyan ang um, of course andiyan ang Nuwadu, yung Child um, Champion Consulting. Uh, before then during our um, uh, in-service training, um, we were able to partner with some professors uh, from the University of Asia Pacific. So, meron kaming uh, uh, mga training engagement with them um, about distance learning and uh, how to really uh, deliver instruction uh, during this pandemic. 
Ang galing, ang galing. Very supported talaga ang local government sa Pasig City, no? Pasig, yeah. Oo. Um, slide, you want to um, ask anything from Sir Tony? Well, um, nabanggit na ni Sir Charlie so about we have we have these devices and then um, tablets na pinapamigay sa mga bata. Now, um, of course, hindi the, the device katulad din nung binag- binanggit ni Sir Charlie kanina that the devices are not enough. So, kailangan meron din tayong contents and um, basically yung devices natin, these are used for the delivery. Pero yung quality ng contents that we will need to deliver to our learners, um, paano po, how, how do we come up with that, um, Sir Charlie, if I may ask? Like, ano yung mga type of, uh, kasi we have DepEd Commons, di ba? We have, um, we have different materials, PDF files, um, images that um, the, the learners or yung mga parents po natin, they can um, readily download. So what aside from the Deaf Ed Commons, um, what are uh, the other resources that we have um, when it comes to the delivery or when it comes to the contents that we would need to share to our learners or yung sa mga stakeholders po natin? All right. Well, um, sa, sa division uh, of past you know, uh, meron tayong mga pool of writers na nakikinig ng division office para magsulat ng modules, okay? So, yung mm. mga ko, um, uh, ito ay binavalidate at uh, quality assure. Um, and then, um, kapag ka natapos na ito, uh, ang, ang planet natin is uh, i, uh, i-upload ito dun sa mga tablets na ito provide, ito provide naman ng city government. So, basically, um, um, ang, yun nga, ang, ang partnership is uh, the city will provide the, the, the gadgets and then the division office will provide the, the content, okay? So yung mga learning modules natin. And in the case of Pasig City Science High School, kasi meron kami mga electives and the uh, add-ons, uh, yung mga tawag namin sa mga additional subjects on top of the core subjects, no? Um, ang mga teachers din namin ay nag, uh, nagsusulat ng self-learning modules at ng mga graded, um, graded worksheets. So lahat ng uh, learning materials na ito, ay um, ilalagay din natin doon sa ating uh, tablet and uh, i-upload din natin ito doon sa ating e-learning platform na gagamitin uh, pagdating ng uh, simulation at pagdating ng pasukan. Okay. I, I um, see. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for, the, for your answers. Um, My next question uh, for Mr. Pihano, no? and Sir Charlie, if you also want to answer, um, ano po yung pinaka nakita nyong uh, effective strategy na you think um, kahit pa pano will increase your chances of having a successful online distance learning um, rollout, so to say? Uh, very good question, uh, Kaela. Well, first and foremost, what we did, no, just uh, sa experience ng women's, ng PWC, uh, I actually asked all our administrators from the basic education up to the college to revisit. We, we call the term uh, reimagine and recasting course contents. No? What I've done is I've asked them to actually look at the curricular offerings that we had, the subject matter areas that we had uh, from the previous years. No? Uh, PWC is a, a paasko accredited institution no level level two uh, um been there for a long time uh we've been an accredited institution for almost 28 years or something so there are some unique aspects of the curriculum that is really already been beyond the minimum requirement prescribed by government so what i did is because from my own experience in my work in the international development cooperation arena, uh, I've had the experience wherein I had to convert two masteral programs, uh, not not by myself, but with a team of experts from all over the world, uh, because we were working in a country uh, that suddenly went into civil war. So it used to be offered face to face, but then we had to support those uh, uh, degrees now from different parts of the world using online uh, methodology. 
So what we did at that time was we actually simplified the actual curricular course content of all the subject matter areas. So ang ginawa namin sa PWC, ganun din. I required all the faculty members of all the departments to revisit all the syllabus, all the learning plans, all the lesson plans to simplify it. We use a methodology called um, essential learning process. So in each track of what is required, na kailangan yung ma-deduce, mapa, mapababa yung pinaka-importanting kaalaman at saka competency na ma makuha ng bata dun sa level na yun. Uh, the curricular content that is being uh, given by DepEd are minimum requirements. No? Ma quite a number of the schools uh, are actually beyond the minimum, especially the accredited schools. No? Kaya ang ginawa namin, uh, pinakuha ko yung aming mga lesson plans at pinasimplify. Ano ba dapat ang kakayahan ng bata kung siya ay ganitong grade level, ang nalalaman niya. And on the basis of that, yun ngayon, dun mo i-build ngayon yung platform, i-build in mo yun sa platform, and then nakatuwang doon yung evaluative criteria. No? So, the, the learning management system is only as good as the content that it has. No? Siya ay magaling lang ang LMS kung yung content na yun ay talagang magaling din, kompleto din, at talagang nakadefine ano ba yung essential learning, ano yung dapat nakaalaman, kakayahan ng bata. Ang sistema ng basic education ng PWC is following a progressive model of a child development-centered approach, no? which is more commonly known in the Philippine education sector as the JASAMS approach, no? So fundamental in our process is a, a very uh, parang hands-on approach to education. So para ma matugunan yung pagka-hands-on approach na yan, each activity, each session, ay meron silang output yung mga bata na gagawin. Para talaga namang hindi naman masayang yung panahon nila. Kaya nga, Ang kahirapan na pinagdaanan ng faculty ngayon is that yung mga subject matter na tinuturo nila, I told them they needed to revisit it with a fresh set of eyes. Kailangan bago yung pananaw nila dun sa mga areas na tinuturo nila. Kasi kung ikaw kukunin mo lang yung iyong face-to-face, -face, ilipat mo siya sa online methodology or ilipat mo siya sa sa ano to sa distance education it will not work kailangan i-identify yon ano ba yung kakayahan na dapat mamit ng bata and then you build the content around that so para sa amin in the last four months it was actually spent on revisiting all our curricular course content ang term na ginamit namin english uh, na term was reimagine pagbabagong pananaw sa dating pamilyar na na ating ginagawa. Ang pangalawa is recasting. Ang recasting, halimbawa, meron kang sing-sing na gusto mong magkaroon ng kakaibang, kakaibang kakayahan o ibang forma. You have to recast that, that context of that uh, metal. So, ganun ang aming dalawang basic na prinsipyo na, na sinusunod namin sa women's is that Reimagine education and recasting education. At ang pinaka importante, eh dapat ang faculty ay willing to embrace the change. Kasi sila ang magtatrabaho, hindi naman kami. So, babuti na lang sa amin, eh lahat naman ay nagkakaintindihan at they are naman willing to, to do the hard work. So, I, I think that is where the, the, the beauty of it is that we need to reimagine re education. Hindi pwede na pareho din sa face-to-face. -face. It doesn't work eh. No? Sir, uh, my question na po dito, I agree with everything you said. We just need to go back to basics po, no? And 
get the most essential and dun po tatakbo yung curriculum natin. So, magtatanong lang po from the audience since this is the forum so let's ask it right now. Um, initiative po ba yung paggawa ng teachers nyo ng modules? Paano po yung gawa ng de- na ng DepEd na modules? Hindi po ba double modules ang papagamit sa learners? Hindi po ba burden and confusing? Paano po ang sistema nyo, sir? Um, ganito yun. Um, unang-una, uh, I can speak of uh, of PWC kasi kami po, uh, ang, ang DepEd requirement kasi, when they do, when they prepare the the learning plans no or yung lesson plans nila no yung sample sample lang naman yon and it requires the minimum requirement no ang uh, tandaan po natin ang gobyerno kasi ang kino-cover nila is the minimum requirement but if you want to be able to get accredited you must enhance the curriculum kailangan po dagdagan yung curricular content no so ang nangyari po sa amin kasi uh, para po sa hindi po nakakaalam, kami ay matandang eskwelahan na po. Ang women's po ay 56 years old as an institution. So, ang basic education, ang pinakamatandang kwan, uh, unit sa buong eskwelahan. In fact, kami nakapag-graduate na itong latest na graduation yata ay 57th of 56 graduation ceremonies. So, ang ginawa namin, hindi naman po nagdoble. Kasi meron na talaga kaming sistema noon pa. Ang ginawa lang namin, ginawa namin yung batayan as the minimum requirement, yung nakapublish na essential knowledge and learning na nakasaad po doon sa sample curriculum ng DepEd. Dinagdagan po namin yon. Kasi nga, may mga requirement kami na specific na mandato ng aming mission, vision, and goals. So, pag sinunod po kasi namin yung minimum lang ng DepEd, ay wala hong kakaibang flavor yon na PWC. E eh, ang binabayaran ho ng mga magulang, ay eh, yung kakaibang flavor, that's, that's the enhancement to our curriculum, is what, what actually makes our education our brand of education. Kaya, um, ano po ang incentive? Magtanong kayo kung nag-incentivize po sila. Ang naging incentive po sa lahat ng faculty, uh, lahat po sila ay may sweldo. Simula po nung pagtapos ng klase, normally pag summer, uh, typically sa private school po, wala pong sweldo ang mga teacher unless sila po ay permanent. Ang ginawa po namin, lahat po ay may sweldo at ginawa nila yung revisiting, reimagining, recasting ng aming uh, lesson plans no, at saka learning plans. So it became really a kind of an interview. no. Um, so w- what we did, uh, it's it's it's... It's both a, a a particular initiative of the teachers, but it was something that the school really uh, asked of them, no. Uh, and it's a kind of a an agreement between the institution and the teachers. Na uh, kami po ay revise talaga yung curricular offerings, yung content. I hope it answered your question. Yes, I hope, sir, um, na-answer po ang question nyo. Um, we have a question here, siguro for Sir Charlie. Um, from Mel Pia Pito, sabi po niya, uh, what I have been hearing from interviews of DepEd officials is the target this school year is minimum competency for each level, just like what Tito mentioned before. The way I ad- understand this is if previously the curriculum before covers 10 topics, Now it will just be eight topics. Would this affect the capabilities of students when they go to the next level? Would this affect the quality of our education? All right. Well, that's a very good question, no? Uh, although, um, uh, hindi naman tayo taga uh, central office, no? I, I represent Pasig City Science High School. But uh, siguro I'd like to speak uh, dun sa effect no, neto sa, sa, sa school level. Um, ang ginawa kasi ng central office ay uh, meron tayong set of learning competencies. Okay? Ito yung uh, binibigay natin um, kapag ka-regular days. Ibig sabihin uh, without the pandemic, without the crisis. Um, ang ginawa nila is um, um, uh, they called no, uh, the, 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 most learning, uh, comp- the most essential learning competencies 
uh, out of the uh, original uh, learning competencies. Um, so definitely, you know, from the original, talagang um, uh, kukonti yun, okay? Um, pero ang uh, in-insure naman sa atin ng Department of Education is that um, itong mga learning competencies na ito ay mga enduring competencies. Um, it it, it uh, touches across uh, learning areas. Ibig sabihin, um, ito talaga yung mga ano, uh, ito talaga yung mga kailangan matutunan ng mga, ng mga bata. Uh, these are non-negotiable competencies na kailangan maibigay natin sa mga uh, sa mga learners natin with or without uh, with or without pandemic. So sa school level, uh, sa amin, when we were uh, reviewing the most essential learning competencies, um, um, I believe, no, sa analysis namin, ito ay, um, ito ay tama lang kasi uh, given the situation that we have, um, imagine natin, if you're going to imagine the condition also of our learners, uh, talagang uh, hindi kakayanin, no, yung, yung time pa lang uh, na ini-spend ng mga bata natin, ng mga learners natin sa pagbabasa uh, or sa pag-study ng mga learning contents na yun, um, isa yun sa mga ano, kinukonsider din namin, okay, na hindi pa pwede na mga bata will be studying independently for like uh, more than uh, more than four hours, okay? Um, in fact, no, sa design namin, uh, although we are a special school, uh, kumbaga yung mga students namin, um, medyo advanced kasi selected sila, um, initially, pinag namin ito sa five hours lang a day. So, ibig sabihin, um, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi lahat ng mga subjects ay um, aralin ng mga students natin in a day. So, limang ano lang, limang oras lang yung uh, uh, kailangan nilang uh, spend para doon sa mga learning contents na ibibigay namin sa kanila. And uh, from the five ano, uh, sessions, yung tatlong sessions doon ay asynchronous and then yung dalawang sessions doon ay synchronous. So, yung synchronous natin ay merong uh, interaction, real-time interaction with the teacher. So actually, maraming considerations eh. Um, na kailangan talaga nating uh, um, uh, isama no, sa ating mga plano to make sure that um, our students will uh, learn the right content, the essential contents, and at the same time, uh, yung psychosocial aspect no, ng mga bata natin ay makikonsider din natin. So I think, um, hindi natin pwedeng i-compare no, yung, uh, yung quality of education na pwedeng makuha ng mga bata Uh, nung wala pa tayong pandemic at uh, uh, ngayon na meron tayong pandemic, siguro uh, it is just ano, rightful na kailangan nating i-reduce, uh, uh, piliin lang mabuti yung mga essential learning competencies na pwede natin ibigay sa mga bata so that the education will, will still continue and at the same time we are protecting, we are um, uh, guarding the safety of our learners. Yes. Yes, with what you said, sir. Tama. And so, if I may, I would like to ask um, a question from either Sir Charlie or um, Professor um, Tito Tejano. Um, I'm, I would like to speak as a parent, um, if I may. Ano, um, ano, ano po ba yung mga effective ways to encourage the parents and the students to support the advocacy of the school, both for private and public school, to give importance to education in spite of, or despite of the circumstances that we are on right now, specifically the pandemic? Uh, well, I guess... Um for for us no uh, again speaking of in terms of experience um ang ginawa ko sa PWC is that i created a we do what we call every month uh ang tawag namin do general assembly with the faculty the coordinators the parents no uh basically uh to encourage and discuss the value of having uh having the children continue their education uh, speaking in the in the sector for the private sector uh ang edukasyon po ay mahal no uh, ang ginawa namin revisit namin yung aming fee structure especially doon sa mga miscellaneous fees uh ang PWC po ay talagang nagbaba ng uh, bahagya Uh, kasi hindi naman pwedeng mawala lahat kasi 
there are fees kasi that are mandated by the regulatory agencies, no? For example, um, yung mga bawat eskwelahan dapat may library, dapat ay may clinic, dapat may guidance center, uh, dapat ay may mga student affairs offices. Uh, yun po ay hindi natin pwedeng malis. Kasi those are government regulations. Government has not changed those regulations yet. Pero, ang ginawa natin, nilimit natin sa bare minimum kasi nga, kailangan tulungan ang mga magulang ngayong mga panahon na to. Yes. Dahil sa totoo lang, lahat naman ay nakihirap. Wala yatang tao akong nakikilala na yumaman o nagkapera ngayong mga panahon na ito. So, I agree po. Uh, napaka-importante sa those, sa mga taong namamalakad sa mga eskwelahan. Ngayon ay kailangan talian natin yung ating mga mga belt, so to speak, no, ang ating sinturon to limit our expenses. But at the same time, we cannot uh, do it at the expense that the quality of our education is lowered. We need to make sure na yung ating ino-offer na edukasyon eh ito ay high 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 volume pa rin at high quality top quality. Um maiinganyo natin yung mga magulang na napakaimportante na yung mga anak nila ay nag-aaral pa din. Kasi kung sila hindi mag-aral ng isang taon, malaking bagay si isang bata na walang ginagawa ng isang taon. Kaya ang importante kung talaga pong hirap at hindi po maka-afford sa private school, ipasok niyo yung mga anak niyo sa public school. Kasi mas mura, di hamak, mas mura ang public school. Ngayon, in defense naman sa mga private school, binibigyan namin naman namin ng tugon yung mga magulang, yung mga kakayahan nila. Like for example, we're matching now scholarships coming from different people uh, sa aming scholarship office para yung mga batang talagang may kakayahan academically, sila ay mabigyan ng tulong. Ngayon, yung mga magulang naman na alam natin ay nakihirap talaga. Uh, meron namang mga panukalang programa ang Davao City through the offices of Mayor Sara Duterte na nagbibigay ng mga scholarship para sa mga magulang na nawala ng trabaho. So, uh, tumutulong po ang eskwelahan para ma-match yun at maibigay yung necessary na mga kaulok-kaukulang mga dokumento. So, ang importante ngayon para sa gobyerno, tulungan din po ang private sector. Kasi ang totoo lang, hindi naman kakayani ng public school lahat ng intake ng mga private school, school students. Kung itilipat yan sa kanila, mas malaki pang problema ang idudunot yan sa public school. As it is, the public schools are already, you know, overbooked in terms of their classrooms, facilities, and all that. Kaya dapat bigyan na lang ang, ang, ang aming hinihingi sa gobyerno, bigyan ng kaukulang, lalo na dun sa mga magulang na nooy nasa private school na, bigyan ng tulong. Kasi huwag natin i-overwhelm ang kapasidad ng public school. Kawawa yeah. din ang public school pagka hindi mo i-balance yan. I really think government has to come to a realization that the complementarity between private and public education has to be maintained. Yeah. Just because nagkaroon ng pandemya, mamatay na yung mga pub- private schools, hindi tama yon. Yeah. Kawawa din. Uh, ma- ma- mahihirapan ang capacity ng public school to be able to, to accommodate the number of students coming from the private schools. Yes, tama po. Especially po right now, um, everyone is new to this, especially yung public school is very new to them. And then pag uh, nagkaroon po ng surge ng enrollment sa public school, I think uh, we will definitely have challenges. Mm-mm. Okay, yes, I agree. I agree. Kailangan pa rin talaga ng balance sa lahat yes. ng balance. Yes. Yes. So, um, I, my apologies, but I think we are um, short of time. So, we would like to ask po any final words, any um, advice for um, school administrators out there, school owners, na hanggang ngayon po, 
um, hesitant, hesitant pa rin to make decisions on ano ba yung gagawin nila for the coming school year. I think for school administrators, uh, ang pinaka-importante at this point is to build in a process of uh, openness uh, number two, flexibility. No, because we are in uncharted territories. For the parents, uh, I think it's also the same openness and to trust that the school administrators and the school owners and the public uh, officials who are in charge of education will try to do the best to ensure that there is continuity in the education of your children. Napaka-importante ho yung, yung level of comfort ng mga magulang na mas importante ho yung mga anak ninyo ay nag-aaral kaysa nasa bahay lang at wala hong ginagawa. Wag nyo, it will be doing them a disservice if you let them stop going to school. Number two, number three, para po doon sa mga teacher, itong mga panahon na ito, ito ina, kayo ang bida. Kasi kayo ang nagdadala sa klase. Ang mga sistema ng katulad ng Nuwado, ang katuwa, katulad ng Canvas, katulad ng, ng model, lahat yan ay instrumento lang. Hindi niyan kayang palitan ang magaling na pagtuturo ng isang magaling na teacher na may puso. Dapat ang mga teacher natin, kasi hirap yung panahon ngayon, eh dapat gaanan yung ating loob habaan ng ating pasensya, uh, lalo na, alam mo, sa lahat ng mga tao, once we open the school year, it will entail a lot of patience from all of us. Yeah. Yun lang ang mensahe ko. Let's try to help one another. Let's mm -hmm. try to be uh, open-minded. As I've told the faculty and staff of women's, we have to embrace change. Mm -hmm. Kasi wala ho tayong, we have no other option but to actually embrace the change because this is the new normal. Again, thank you for this opportunity. And I, I, it was a very good uh, afternoon to, to have this conversation with all of you. Thank you so thank much. You so much. And your advice. Your advice. Um, well, can we hear from Sir Sikardi? Thank you. I completely agree no, with uh, what uh, Professor Pihano has just said. Um, on our part, naman, we want to give our parents the confidence that you know we are doing our best to prepare for the distance learning, whether it's online or um, other modality. And uh, this is what we're doing in the past uh, few months. No? We are trying to do our best to prepare all the learning materials needed. Uh, we're trying to upgrade then yung ating mga facilities to address the needs of our faculty. Uh, like, 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 for example, uh, we will be converting our library into uh, teachers' e-lounge, no? para yung mga teachers na, natin who will be having problems with um, internet uh, connectivity at home while working, eh, meron silang uh, lugar na pupuntahan um, as an alternative. Um, yung aming AVR, uh, for example, ay gagawin namin, no? i-convert namin ito into um a slam station okay yung slam ang, ang tawag namin dun sa dun sa uh, self learning ano uh, material so bale uh, dito sa aming AVR ilalagay yung lahat ng mga uh, learning materials na na develop ng ating mga teachers including yung mga modules na tinatapos na ngayon ng mga uh, writers natin sa division office uh, uh, tayo din ay naghahanda ng uh, recording studio mini recording studio uh, para dun sa mga video-based lesson na gagawin ng mga teachers natin. So, uh, lahat ng to, we're trying to, uh, to prepare no, para uh, makatulong sa ating mga teachers. Sabi nga ni Prof. Uh, uh, Pihano, yung mga teachers natin, sila yung uh, bida ngayon. Okay? Kung, uh, kung sa, sa, sa pandemic in the last uh, few months, ang bida yung mga medical workers natin, ngayon talagang uh, yung mga teachers natin ay uh, very much needed to make sure that uh, we're giving the right education to our learners. And um, we're also preparing for different uh, learning delivery options to cater to the specific needs of our students. Uh, we will have a communication plan to ensure that the whole school community um, are updated of all the actions and decisions that, um, that we are doing at the management level. 
hindi po kailangan mag-alala no, ng ating mga magulang dahil uh, pinaghahandaan po natin mabuti at ginagawa natin ang lahat ng ating makakaya para maihanda ang lahat para sa darating na, na pasukan. Napakarami pong challenges okay? at uh, lahat ng ito po ay uh, inevitable but uh, with the help of, um, of all the stakeholders, alam po namin, nararamdaman namin na malalampasan po natin uh, ang, uh, ang mga challenges na ito. So maraming maraming salamat, uh, uh, Mami Kaela and uh, Sir Sly, no, for giving us the opportunity to communicate with, um, with our parents no, who are listening now, who are watching now, at sa iba pang mga parents na alam ko na nag-worry din uh, kung ano yung mangyayari pagdating ng, uh, ng pasukan. So um, patuloy nating ano, tulungan ang bawat isa uh, para malagpas, malagpasan natin itong uh, crisis na ito. So maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Yes, thank you, Sir Charlie. Yes, um, maraming salamat sa ating um, dalawang napakahusay talaga na school administrators, school leaders na are committed to really lead our schools and lead our children para magpatuloy ang learning this coming school year. So now we can proceed to our next panelists. Let us now proceed to the teachers. Um, from PwC and Pasig City Science High School. So may we now call on um, Ms. Colleen Ann Labor from PwC, Ma'am Marie Chris Morillo of Pasig Science, no? Science, Science, Science. And, and Ma'am, may feedback lang po. Sorry. Um, and Ma'am Maricar Oriarte. Okay. Hi, welcome. Good afternoon. Hi, good, good afternoon po. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I see that um yes, I see both that the teachers um, from teachers from Meron po atang naka loudspeaker sa kanila. Naka loudspeaker sa kanila. Po ata. Ma'am, naka loudspeaker po. Ma'am, naka loudspeaker po. Sorry. Yes, hello. I'm sure. Yes, hello. Hi, sorry. Sure. Ma'am, umamit ko lang po kayo. Okay lang po. Okay lang po. Okay lang po. Yes. Um, I'm yes. sure napaka-excited um, sure. ng ating mga teachers to share their insights also. Um, so, Siguro simulan natin, Sir Sly, by asking the question, kamusta na po ang pagpe-prepare natin? <laughs> yes, yun yung pinakamagandang question eh. How, 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 are we, how are we preparing for the new normal? Uh, siguro maganda rin po, um, coming from you, malaman namin what are your challenges as a teacher and then how do you go about overcoming these challenges uh, when facing this new normal that we have for uh, the next school year. Yes, may we start with Ma'am Colleen from PwC. May we proceed to Ma'am Maricar and Ma'am Chris. Thank you. So, our preparations, we joined different webinars like um, how we can implement modular approach to the students when we are teaching, how we can design modules, and how we can help the learners to be self-paced in terms of learning, I mean, in terms of this new platform. And um, we joined also seminars like on how we can um, help the parents to um, help their students when they are um, learning inside their home. So yun po, and we also prepared in our school different different um, documents or preparations for the modules. Um, we streamlined all the support and power competencies po that are needed para suitable po siya sa mga modules na gagawin po namin. And yun po, and um, aside from that, we started to make our one-year learning program. In this program po, nakalist lahat ng mga strategies namin na i-a-apply during the classroom uh, discussion, I mean, online classroom discussion. Mm -hmm. Yun po yung mga preparations namin. Thank you, Ma'am Colleen. How about Ma'am Maricar? 
Hi, good afternoon, Miss Mika, Sir Sly, and to all the parents and students who are watching right now. So, magandang hapon po. Kami po sa Passive Science, we have actually attended a lot of um, webinars in preparation for the new normal. So, we started last June 1. But actually, even before June 1, we had uh, plans no, of uh, this series of seminars or webinars. And then we also have, um, the administration has capacitated us in terms of online distance learning. This is actually a very good avenue for all of us. You see, as teachers, no, we are used to the traditional setup. This pandemic has brought us into really embracing the new normal. So our administration is really very supportive in, in giving teachers webinars. No? And we also have um, attended several um, seminars, webinars on approaches and strategies in dealing with the new normal. Since our students are, um, shall I say, cream of the crop in Pasig, uh, Pasig City, we really have to make sure that we deliver quality um, materials to our students. Thank you, ma'am. Let's hear from ma'am Chris Paul. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you all. And uh, to answer that, since we are in the same school with Ms. Uh, Oriarte, yeah, I agree with that preparation, Sano. But if, uh, at the top of the uh, different uh, online platforms that we're going to engage with, of course, we have to be ready with our with ourselves, aside from the preparation, that we're going to be ready with that new normal. Totoo yun, ano, napaka-overwhelming ng mga webinars, napakarami po namin mga sem online seminars na ina -atenan. But first of all, we have to be ready within ourselves are we ready to face this new normal of course since we are dealing with uh, as what miss k said the team of the crafts of course dapat kung hindi na kami makasabay sa mga estudyante namin in terms of uh, online learning kinakailangan man lang eh maka one step uh, advance kami sa kanila kasi magagaling talaga sila in terms of technology. Magaling pa po sila sa amin especially yung mga uh, katulad po namin as uh, most of us are digital migrants. So sila mga digital natives na mas alam po po nila yung mga ganyang platforms ng mga uh, learning learning pla platforms. So what we are doing is that we are really trying to familiarize with the different online learnings and we are really indeed uh, attending many webinars and then of course uh, sa sarili rin po namin really equipping na kinakailangan the whole being as a teacher ay kinakailangan maging prepared talaga in um, in this new normal setup. <laughs> Yun lamang po. Thank you po. Thank you po. Uh, 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 sorry, meet ko lang kayo ma'am. Meet ko lang kayo ma'am. It looks like talagang handang-handa na or talagang they are really prepared. Yes. <laughs> bracing themselves for the next school year. Um, curious lang talaga ako, Sir Stai, as a parent kasi din. Um, I'm sure marami rin nag gusto nang itanong to. Ano po ba ang role ng mga parents sa online distance learning? And syempre, alam naman po natin importante yun. Pero what are your expectations as a teacher? Ano po ang expect natin sa mga um, parents? Um, anyone could answer po. I'll start na, no? Um, start na, no? I think parent um, involvement think has parent always mattered. Has... Even dun sa face-to-face -face modality or ito sa online modality blended man, kung ano man tawag dun sa modality na yan. I think parent involvement has always mattered. Um, the fact that we, this time, I think we really have to heighten par par parental involvement rather. Which means that um, ang mga teachers ngayon ay ang mga parents na. So yung ating traditional na classroom, we have to change that into uh, our classroom should be ch changed to the living room classroom. Uh, Diyan tayo magkakandak ng follow-up lesson sa mga anak natin. If not yung living room natin mismo, yun na yung nagiging classroom sa bahay. So I think uh, it's about time to really heighten parental involvement. Ako din, Miss Miss Mika and Sir Sly, no? ako din ay mother ng four years old. So pagkagising sa umaga, meron na kaming schedule. For instance, pagkagising ni, ni no, aking anak, ni Jada, by 10 o'clock, dapat mag-aaral na kami. Uh, 10 to 11 yan. So by 11 o'clock, tapos na kami. After which, sa hapon, meron na naman kami. 
So parental involvement really matters in this uh, in this time. And um, in addition to what Ms. Uh, Mrs. Maricar said, um, I think the parents are our partners. Since they are our partners, uh, they will help us impose discipline and as well as impose authority during the classroom setup, may classroom setup, I mean online classroom setup. So, napakahalaga ho talaga ng function ng parents. Thank you for that. Yes, Ma'am Chris. I agree with that. I agree with that and no? all. Diba we have this saying that it takes a village to educate a child. So, kung kanina po narinig po natin na ang mga teachers ngayon, ang ating mga frontliners, at uh, sinabi nga po na mistake kanina, that parents are also the teachers nowadays. So, siguro mararamdaman din po natin na ano ang gagawin, papaano nila ito gagawin. Napaka-importante rin na uh, sa ating pong side, sa part po namin, sa school system, uh, matulungan din po namin yung mga parents to educate the, the, the parents. So, paano nila ituturo? Kasi kung papaano kami nga po ay alam na po namin kung paano po ito i-address, siyempre, meron po at malalaman din natin yung hesitations ng mga parents na ano ituturo, paano ituturo, hindi po ba? Kaya alam nyo po, napakalaking bagay po yung mga ganitong pag-uusap ng mga ganitong forum so that the parents also, we have an idea on how are we going to educate our, our our, our children, hindi po ba? Uh, uh, napakahalaga rin po na meron po tayong sistema na sinasabi nga kanina kung meron. Iba-iba po kasi yung strategy yan sa iba't ibang magulang kung paano. Pero uh, pwede rin naman po mga powerful 15 minutes kung paano. Halimbawa, wala na kapag... Uh, um, sa mga preschoolers, kinakailangan may 15 minutes po tayo. Powerful 15 minutes lang kasi hindi po natin talaga sila po pwede na paupuin in one hour eh, sa mga kindergarten. Pero sa amin po, on our part po, dahil nasa secondary level po kami at sinasabi nga na itong mga batang ito ay cream of the crop, napaka-importante rin po na ipaalam natin sa mga mga magulang nila na ano ang mga pinag-aaralan nila. Baka mamaya sabihin eh, mas uh, may mga magulang po tayo na hindi rin po talaga ganoon kamaalam pagdating po sa teknolohiya. Kaya po um, the school in Pasig City Science High School, we are also planning to have an orientation for the parents on how are they going to educate the parents. So, ang orientation po namin, uh, we're planning to, uh, to have that na uh, hindi lamang kami kinakailangang magkaroon ng meetings for the for the teachers, orientations para po sa mga students but course, importante ma-involve din yung mga magulang kung ano yung talagang crucial rule nila. Kasi aside from educating their children, may trabaho po yung hinaharap, hindi po ba? So, kanina may iwan yung mga bata, ano ang gagawin nilang strategy? May iwanan ba muna yung worksheets or yung module at pagdating nila sa trabaho, saka sila mag-uusap kung paano ang pagka-follow up, kung paano po magkakaroon ng pag tutulungan sabi nga kayo di ba collaboration is very important in facing this new normal kaya po napakahalaga po na ang bawat isa ay may contribution po sa atin kasi hindi po pwedeng iasa lamang po sa part ng education sa mga guro hindi rin naman po pwedeng iasa rin po natin sa mga magulang so kailangan po talaga ngayon uh, lalong palakasin yung partnership sa pagitan po ng paaralan at ng tahanan at syempre pa hindi lang po ito paaralan at tahanan kasi nga lahat po ng partners natin kinakailangan ng mga stakeholders natin ay kinakailangan uh, kumilos, makipagkapit-bisig. So, napaka-importante po ng, ng um, local government, napaka-importante po ng barangay. So, lahat po na ahensya ng pamahalaan ay kinakailangan kumilos to, uh, to educate po these children. Yun lamang po. Yes, ma'am. Back to you, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Chris. Napakaganda ng sagot ng mga um, teachers natin. No? So at this point, medyo na-enlighten na tayo kung what are the steps that the teachers are planning para ma-orient yung mga parents and to drive collaboration between the teacher and the parents. Uh, that is between the teacher and the parents. Paano naman po yung uh, what are your plans to motivate or encourage yung mga students naman po natin, especially yung mga students na hindi sanay, like this, their first time, not meron. Kasi I know that with our generation, um, some of the students are advanced now when it comes to technology, mga different platforms, different devices. How about uh, students na um, fairly new to this ano talaga, um, environment?
Yes, hello yes. po. Hello okay. Po. So, okay. Uh, so, actually, uh, ako, being a teacher, uh, uh, di po ba, uh, saan uh, po sa past time, sa palad po kami, kasi yung mga sigati po namin, talaga po magagaling po sila, kasi at their very early uh, grade level po, meron na po silang mga ICT. So, pagdating po niya ng mga grade 10, gumagawa na po yan ng website, magagaling na po talaga po sila pagdating dyan. Pero I'm also thinking po, pa, paano naman yung mga hindi talaga ganun kahusay, hindi po ba? Yes, so, yes. Uh, po ba meron po tayo yung mga tinatawag na iba't ibang approach dun po sa blended learning. Kaya nga po meron po tayong synchronous and asynchronous learning. So, sa mga hindi po talaga mahusay, pagdating po dyan sa larangan ng teknolohiya, kaya po nakarate po tayo dun po sa ating mga modules. So, may, aside from the modules, may mga worksheets po pong piniprepare ang mga guro para nang sa ganun po, magkaharoon po tayo ng sistema kung paano po na kung hindi kaya po talaga sa online, halimbawa, marami po tayong mga factors na i-consider dyan. Halimbawa ay yung internet connectivity, hindi po ba yung kung kung marunong nga rin po ba yung mga bata o yung magulang sa pag-assist doon sa may kinalaman po sa teknolohiya pag hindi po doon di po ba meron naman pong option na kung saan uh, magkakaroon po sila ng modules meron po silang mga worksheets posibleng ipasa nila ito sa paaralan nang sa ganun ay mag-grade po ng mga guro so yun lamang po ay kinakailangan pong ma-encourage sila na wag silang masyadong magrela kasi kung hindi talaga sila uh, kaya doon sa online learning meron pa naman pong another means for them to be able to um to pursue their studies po nang sa ganun po ay sabi nga no child left behind so yan po yung isa sa mga dapat na uh, napaka-importante lang po kasi talaga yung communication this information dissemination na ito po yung mga options ng mga bata natin so palagi ko po dapat po talagang strengthen natin yung ating pong information drive yung ating pong communication sa mga magulang at saka syempre pa yung para po sa kaalaman po ng mga estudyante natin yun lamang po at saka sa amin po dito sa pas science, napakalaking bagay din po ng SSG or the Supreme Student Government. Kasi sila sila rin po yung nagkakaroon ng pagkakataon na magkatulong-tulungan. As a matter of fact, I would like to to say na rin po na di po ba meron po kami mga incoming grade 12 na uh, these are the students who are going to take college entrance exams. So as early as uh, May, meron na po silang mga nabuong uh, group review na talagang sila-sila po yung uh, the, the gamma fields, yung mga physics club po namin. Siyempre po sa panguna po ng aming pong mga mahusay na advisors pagdating po sa physics, sila po ay nagkaroon po ng mga group chats at nagsuzoom na rin po sila. Sila rin po gumagawa ng paraan through that SSG. Talaga po, um, nabigyan po sila ng empowerment na sa ganun ay uh, makipagtulungan din po sila sa paaralan. So, yun po yung ilan sa mga maaari kong ma-share kung paano po natin sila ma-encourage. Yun lang po, Sir Sly. Thank you, Ma'am Chris. Uh, Ma'am Colleen, do you want to add something for the private sector naman po? po we have this flexible wait lang po can you hear me po yes so um in our school we have flexible blended learning program so in this program meron ho coming um offline and online instruction na available po for po, po for our students and meron ho din silang um self directive modules so same po kami, uh, same po with uh, Ma'am Chris kanina, um, we are ready po sa varied uh, needs ng aming mga students. So we made sure na um, kahit, uh, kahit sino ay pwede hong um, um, tumulong, ay pwede hong maging uh, part ng Women's College and pwede hong uh, mag-aral this year. Despite this pandemic. Yun lang po. Yeah. Thank you po. Thank you po for your answers. Siguro po, may we ask for your final words? Uh, any advice po sa co-teachers nyo and the parents and also yung mag, yung mag students nyo po uh, for this coming school year? So siguro I'll start na ulit, no? Ma'am Mika and uh, Sir Sly. Sa lahat po ng mga magulang, there's nothing to worry about. Wag po kayong matakot. Kami po sa education sector is ready to embrace the new normal. Currently, we are writing our modules. 
for our children, whether online or offline, we are we are prepared for that. Ready po kami sa sa mga pagbabagong pwedeng maibigay ng uh, ng new normal. And then uh, siguro advice ko lang po sa ating mga kaguroan din na siguro katulad ko rin po na medyo hindi sanay sa paggamit ng teknolohiya. I think this is really the the time that we get to embrace technology. Ito na po yung pinakamagandang oras that, that we get to embrace technology. You know, Sir Sly and Mamika, the beauty of this pandemic is that we are being challenged to face technology so we can deliver quality education to our 21st century learners. Sabi nga nila, COVID lang yan. Mag-aaral ng, ng, ito ay mga mag-aaral na Pinoy. So, kayang-kaya po natin yan. Sa mga magulang po na tulad ko, I know you have your apprehensions, you have your issues. Don't worry, the teachers, the administration, the local government, DepEd, all the agencies in the government, we are ready to help you out. Thank you, Ms. Maricor. Uh, Ma'am Ma Chris? Uh, Ma'am Chris, naka-mute po kayo. Okay po. Ayan. Alam niyo po, uh, facing this new normal, we must be normal. <laughs> Di po ba? Kinakailangan po natin mo normal sa pagharap ng bagong sa pagharap sa bagong normal. Ano pong ibig kong sabihin nito? Kinakailangan po natin ihanda at harapin po natin kung ano po itong mga bagpabago at mga pagsubok na dala po nitong atin pong bagong sitwasyon. Hindi po natin kinakailangan lumugmok. Bagkus po kinakailangan po natin tingnan ano po ba yung naroroon sa kabilang bahagi po ng bahari. At saka nais ko lamang pong i-share sa inyo na nakakatuwa po kasi ang tema po uh, ang slogan po kasi ngayon ng Brigade Eskwela is bayanihan sa paaralan. So, kailangan po bawat isa po sa atin, bawat, um, bawat isa po sa atin, hindi po kailangan ng mga superpowers kasi it is within us to be the heroes in every way that we can. So, bawat isa po sa atin ay mga bayani, lalong-lalo na po yung atin po mga mahal na guro. Tayo po ay ang mga bayani sa paaralan, ang mga magulang po ay bayani sa tahanan. Ang pamahalaan po ang siyang nangunguna pagdating po sa pang, uh, proses so po at kung ano bang mga panuntunan na dapat po natin sundin at syempre pa nandiyan po ang mga pribadong sektor upang makipagtulungan. So bawat isa po sa atin ay may papel na ginagampanan kaya ang COVID-19 hindi natin dapat katakutan. So ano man po ang sitwasyon na ating kakaharapin, magiging positibo po tayo, kayang-kaya po yan kasi Pilipino bayanin totoo. Hindi lang po. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, practical advice po sa mga guro natin. Um, we need to always learn, improve, and don't be afraid to ask um, information, especially, I mean, information to the more knowledgeable colleagues po. Kasi yun ho talaga yung magiging source natin in this pandemic. And I know everything is new. So, kakayanin ho natin yun. And as for the students, do not be afraid. And as well as the parents. Because we are do doing our best. Um, uh, we are um, doing our best. And we are um, finding the best quality of edu education that we can give uh, despite this pandemic. So I hope that we can embrace this um, new normal with uh, with meaningful learning for, for the students. Thank you so much to all our teachers. Napaka, napaka, I, ako personally, I'm so impressed. And ako as a parent, kung kayo po ang mga uh, teachers na aking anak, kampanting-kampante na po talaga ako, confident na ako na meron po kong kasama. Hindi ako iniwan, kumbaga. So, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And thank you, Paul. Yes. Mabuhay po kayo. Continue to others. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, we would like to call on our parents and their children their kids to join us 
let's um, call on um, Miss Catherine Santos and Isa Santos from Pasig City Science High School, Ma'am Candice Evangelista uh, from CCAT Learning Review Center, and Mommy Gurley and Fatima Nicole Sumapi. Welcome, welcome. And welcome po and good afternoon po. Welcome, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon po. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon oh my everyone. God, my God. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I'm really happy and excited to have you all here. I think this is one of the few webinars kung saan po ang parent po and their kids are actually going to share share their insights about um, what is going to happen in the next few months. No, so Sir Slide, do you have a question for? Um, our yeah, uh, siguro my question for uh, especially for the parents, because I'm a parents myself. Um, what are the preparations po ba na ginagawa nyo, uh, for the new school year? Um, who would like to start, Ma'am Gurley? Would you like to start? Ooh, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um. I am a mother of two. One is uh, Fatima and another one is Francis. Now, uh, what are my preparations? First is uh, uh, I'm imposing discipline. Uh, discipline, because they're used to wake up very late in the morning. So I told them that starting uh, July, July, they should wake up before 6. Because I told them that the new normal, uh, the class starts on August 26, and it would be the same as, as just like face to face. So, uh, kailangan, kailangan, uh, uh, pagising nila, uh, kailangan, uh, they clean up, and then they should be ready at seven o'clock. Kasi nga, uh, as what I have said earlier, that the classes start still the same at 7.30. So everybody should be ready at 7 o'clock. Kasi uh, sanay na kasi sila na uh, gumising ng very late at uh, 9 a.m. So if we will not impose discipline until August 26, then nun ang mangyayari. And second thing is, my husband and I are preparing their study area because since this is the new normal we need to uh, set up the study area of our kids kasi nga uh, yun uh, it would be an online distance learning so dapat uh, mayroon talaga silang a particular area to study and i think uh, it's not going to be in inside the bedroom kasi baka matutulog lang sila during their online classes so Yun nga. So, uh, setting up the study area and we are also um, thinking of how are they going, what are they going to use? Are they going to use laptop or just a cell phone? So, yun ang preparation namin ng aking husband for this uh, incoming new normal online class. Yun po. Yeah. And thank you po, uh, Mami Gurley. And uh, can we hear um, your thoughts po, uh, Mami Candice? All right, good afternoon sa lahat po na nandito sa forum ngayon. Uh, I'm Candice and I have two kids. No, Ang kasama ko ngayon is yung aking bunso, uh, who's in coming grade 7. I am also an education entrepreneur. So nasa tutorial and review center industry ako. So thankfully... Whatever preparations I make no, for our uh, tutorial review center ay nakikinabang po yung aking maliit na bata ito. So, um, you know, when the announcement about the community quarantine no, was made, uh, we had to make a quick decision no, sa admin part ng review center to uh, transfer all of our programs into digital and online mode. No? So, doon po kami naging busy-busy bago po nag-start yung Holy Week. No? So, binuhos po namin yung time that we had before the Holy Week break para po mag-transition kami sa digital and online learning. 
So thankfully po, uh, as early as last year, some of our materials ay na-digitize na. So hindi na po kami ganun masyado nahirapan no? paano siya i, um, i-transfer into another uh, uh, mode. No? So uh, nag-open din po kami ng online tutorials uh, right after summer break. At yung uh, anak ko po ay naka-enroll po doon is called Tutor Champ. So yun po ang nagiging parang practice niya. No? for the new uh, normal in education this coming school year. So that's what we've been busy with. And just like Ma'am Gurley, inaayos din po namin yung uh, magiging workstation ng mga bata para meron po silang designated area sa bahay kung saan doon po sila pwedeng mag... Uh, when they see that area, they know that it's time to study and time to learn. Yeah, thank you po, uh, Mami Candice. And... Um, Let's hear from Mami Katerina naman po. Yes, uh, hi everyone. I'm Mami Kathy. My I'm with my eldest, Isa. I also have another daughter, Ina, who's an incoming grade 5. Isa is an incoming grade 8 at Pasig City Science High School. Uh, from our end, uh, aside from uh, securing gadgets that uh, kids will probably need, uh, we also plan to apply Grade our internet connection kasi uh, it's a reality right now hindi pa lahat ng estudyante naka-online and yet we are exper- sometimes we experience uh, glitches with our internet connection so how much more when the entire Philippines <laughs> ay naka-online na nang sabay-sabay so uh, we're planning to upgrade our internet connection and then just like the other two mommies here um, uh, luckily we have an office or a uh, library in the house so it's just a matter of uh, really putting everything in uh, order para yung study study tables ay claro uh, para doon yung study area ng mga bata uh, also we are trying to explain to them how the schedule will be uh, pag nag start na yung online learning at saka yung bagong proseso na haharapin nila Uh, hindi pa po kami gumigising ng maaga. <laughs> uh, tama yung sinabi ni Mami na sanay nang gumising ng late ang mga bata. Yung nga pong 9 o'clock ay hindi pa late. Meron pang mas late doon. <laughs> so, uh, in-explain namin sa kanila na slowly kailangan nang gumising ng uh, unti-unti ng may, maybe an hour earlier each day hanggang sa makarating na ng yung aga na kailangan. So, ang isa lang maganda, siguro doon sa online learning na mangyayari, ay hindi na nila kailangan gumising ng alas 4 ng umaga para makarat- makaalis ng alas 6, para makarating sa school ng before 7, 7.10 or whatever. Uh, mawawala yung travel time, ba? Diba? So yun ang isang masaya sa online learning na mangyayari, mawawala yung uh, oras na ginugugol sa traffic. Uh, So yun, so explain namin sa kanila na pag nag-start na yung online, maiiba na of course ang schedule. Tama na ang, ang kasiyahan ng walang schedule na ginagawa during the pandemic. Uh, so yun, so gradually we have to adjust to the schooling schedule um, very soon. Uh, tapos, since kami ng husband ko ay parehong teachers, uh, although ako ay full-time mom na, um, yung husband ko ay math teacher, so... Uh, academically, uh, itong dalawang mga bata ay nagsasagot ng worksheets every now and then para hindi ma... Uh, para ma, 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 is, mag-function pa rin yung isip. Kasi let's face it uh, with my fellow moms here, ang challenging din ng pandemic kasi how can you make the children ba talaga just study every day? <laughs> Siyempre, ayaw nilang gawin. Gawin yun, sorry. Uh, so... They had their, ano naman na, marami na silang naging free time to finally relax naman kasi it's very, ang iba rin yung pressure sa mga bata, di ba, ng pag-aaral. Iba rin talaga na ang aga-aga nilang gumigising, pag-uwi sa hapon, ang dami pa rin homework, kulang sila ng tulog. Uh, nitong pandemic, one thing that we are thankful for is that nakabawi ng tulog ang mga tao, nakabawi ng tulog ang mga bata. Kaya din medyo lumaki na, look, di ba? Tumakad sila, lumaki sila. Kasi they have enough sleep, more than enough sleep. Yung mga parents somehow nakapagpahinga din kahit pa paano. So, yes, we're all geared up to embracing the new normal. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you po sa insights and sa thoughts niyo po ng mga mamis natin. Ms. Mikai, do you have any question for our parents? Um, actually, I would like to ask naman their kids. Um, ah. Siyempre, I know um, the online distance learning is very new to all of you. Um, my question now is, what kind of help do you need from mommy and daddy? Um, siguro, I'd like to hear first from Fatima. What kind of help do you need um, in terms of um, siguro what you need, providing what you need, or helping you with your classes? Can you share with us? Thank you. Um, okay po. Good afternoon, everyone. What I need from my parents nowadays is the support and the love, especially now that we are in the on online na ang ginagamit natin dahil sa pandemic. The love and support ang kailangan ko of, of a person ngayon is the love, support, and also their teaching skills to me para mas ma-enhance pa yung ano, learning skills ko. Thank you. Tama. Love and support. Yes, I'm taking notes too. <laughs> How about uh, Mommy Can? Uh, Vito, uh, would you like to share what uh, kind of What help I need from my parents is like to elaborate the lesson because sometimes when it's online, I can't really like focus on it and understand properly. So sometimes I ask my parents for to elaborate the lesson so I can understand it. Okay, thank you. How about Isa? Just like Fatima po, of course, we also need the love and support po from our parents. And of course, yung pag, yung pag, ano, hindi niyo po nagigets yung mga tinuturo, yung teaching skills din po nila, of course, we need it. Kasi it's gonna be a different experience from yung physical na nakikipag-usap ka from your teachers and all that. So, minsan, mahirap din po silang, mahirap pong intindihin yung mga teachers online. So, hmm. kailangan po namin yung teaching skills ng parents namin at time. Yes, okay. Na-mention na ang teaching skills. So, meron talaga ang expectation from the parents. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask again the parents, um, okay, what are we expecting from ourselves? Anong klaseng teaching po ba ang nai-imagine natin that we will be yeah. doing? Um, Ma'am Candid, would you like to start? Or Ma'am, anyone? Um, siguro sa akin, our, my challenge would be to how to simplify no, the content that's being given to them because um, I still don't know what to expect yet, what kind of module we are going to receive from my school, from my son's school. So, uh, in anticipate ko is that he will probably need a lot of help uh, making it uh, simple for him to understand. So, I'm preparing myself on how to simplify things, no? Uh, sa modules nila. I'll probably be uh, resorting to videos no, uh, that are designed talaga for young kids. So, I will be able to um, explain it no, sa level nila. I actually have a background in teaching, but I haven't taught in quite a long time now. I'm a science teacher by profession on. But, you know, if, if you have not been using it, no, they, they say you lose it, right? So, I'm also... Um, trying to gain back no, my teaching skills, my uh, uh, methods in pedagogy, and try to apply it this time to my own child. And um, I will be, uh, because I have a review center, we have a quite a uh, extensive library already. So I will be using probably most of our materials, whatever it is that uh, will be useful para kay Vito. So simplifying and using my existing library in the business to help him with schoolwork. Thank you, Ma'am Candice. How about um, Mommy Gurley? Would you like to share? Um, I think uh, the role of the parents in these times of pandemic is very crucial, especially uh, if you are also a working parent. So, uh, it's really very crucial, but I think it would be uh, uh, easier for our children, especially if the school is using 
an LMS where it would be easier for our children to learn because, you know, they are millennials and they know better than the parents on how to use this uh, platform. And I think uh, in my case, uh, maybe I will just ask them on the particular topic that they have really difficult to answer on. So, kasi, uh, I trust that the teachers can also explain the, uh, what do you call this, the lessons online during their synchronous meeting because, you know, uh, we have this synchronous and asynchronous. So, maybe I will butt in in the, in the asynchronous when they have these questions or clarifications on uh, some topics. Kasi, uh, yun nga, sabi ko, uh, the role of the parents is very crucial, especially for us uh, working parents. And I hope that uh, um, the Nuwadu platform will help us uh, Less, uh, lessen the the you know the difficulty of uh, difficulty of understanding the different concepts that the children will understand, and I am also confident that the the teachers, the school are doing their part to you know to to just teach our children the most essential learning competencies because that's what we need now uh the essential kasi kung uh we are in the face to face walang problema now since this is about virtual classroom online learning so i hope that uh all of the most essential learnings are already uh streamlined Para naman, hindi naman masyadong mahirap din sa aming parents pag-understand yung mga uh, instructions doon sa, kani sa, sa ginagawa nilang mga uh, module or, or any ano, uh, ways po. Yun lang po. So, uh, as a mother, of course, what we can do is to really uh, teach our children. But, uh, let us also consider that we are not the one who learn. So we have to trust our children that they can learn by themselves. All we need to do is to be at their back. And then if there are clarifications, then we can help them. That's it. Po. Thank you. Po. Thank you, po, ma. If I may go ahead. Yes. Uh, oh, well, we try. We acknowledge that the parents are now going to play a bigger role in terms of yung assisting the children, since most of the learning will take at home uh, will take place at home. But we trust that uh, I think most parents would uh, agree with me on this. Now we trust that the modules and the and the materials that are being prepared by by the teachers are more or less self-explanatory or easy for the children to understand on their own. Because we also expect we, we also cannot expect each and every parent to know what to do and to have the time to really be there with the children. Because not all children have uh, uh, teacher parents. Niba swerte na lang ng mga bata na merong uh, teacher na parent. Pero hindi naman lahat ng magulang ay guro. At hindi lahat ng, ng magulang na magaling sa kanilang mga fields ay magaling ding magturo. Kasi ang pagtuturo ay isang, it's, it's, a, it's a gift also, it's a talent. Diba? Alam natin na hindi lahat ng magaling na tao ay kayang magturo. So, uh, uh, while kailangan ng tulong ng mga parents, uh, ang siguro ang simula na hope ng mga parents ngayon ay yung uh, modules na ibibigay sa mga bata, whether synchronous or asynchronous, ay madali para sa mga bata na makuha. Okay? So on our end, kung kayang matulungan yung mga bata, then of course matulungan ng parents. But uh, ang isang pinakamalaking pwedeng gawin ng magulang na tulong ay maging encouraging dun sa mga bata. 
At saka, siguro, uh, I think very important na we designate a place na talagang yun ang kanilang study area. Para alam nila na pag pumunta sila doon, alam mo yun yung kasi pag pumapasok sila everyday, alam nila na on their way to school, okay, papunta na ako sa school, mag-aaral ako. Pag upo nila doon sa desk nila, alam nila na studyante na sila and it's now time to study and not to play. ba diba? So siguro since ang isang challenge ay dahil nga sa bahay mangyayari, let's designate a corner doon sa bahay natin na ito ang study corner. So pag upo ng bata doon, okay, naka-mindset na siya na mag-aaral ako. So hindi, hindi ahawakan ko yung telepono ko to study and not to chat. ba diba? So kailangan yung discipline na yun. At ang isa pang maitutulong ng magulang, irespeto natin yung oras ng pag-aaral ng mga bata. So kung meron tayong sariling room na mag-aaral sila, they can be quiet there, ba diba? Pero hindi naman lahat ng bahay ay ganon. Hindi lahat ng pamilya ay may ganong uh, luxury na merong sariling room na pwedeng maging study room ng mga bata. Pwedeng isang corner lang. So bilang magulang na kasama ng mga bata, maging tahimik din tayo. <laughs> Huwag mo nang mag-uutos. Alam mo yun, yung irespeto natin yung oras ng mga bata. Kung, kung yun yung study time nila, bawal mo na silang utusan. Sila, mm-hmm. ano, kasi mag-aaral sila. So yung utos natin, i-reserve natin sa maya-maya na pagtapos na yung schedule nila. So yung, yung ganitong mga little na tulong, not necessarily academic, pero I think makakatulong ng malaki kung yung bata walang naririnig na outside noise, kung may mga kapatid sila, bawal mo na mag-ingay yung mga kapatid kasi nag-aaral si ate or si kuya. These little things I think will help the children. Very well said po, Mami Catherine. Tama, I agree with everything you said. Um, siguro, let's go ask again the kids. Um, ano ba sa tingin nyo ang mas preferred nyo na learning mode siguro? Is it, do you enjoy live classes? Like yung merong teachers, may video conference? Tapos uh, mag-uusap kayo ng teacher with your classmates? Or do you prefer yung self-paced na um, bibigyan lang kayo ng study plan and you study um, on your own pace? Um, anyone can start sharing. How about ka, um, Isa? Would you like to share? Sa akin po, iba pa rin yung, ano, yung personal na nakikipag-usap sa teacher. Pero sa ngayon po, since of course we cannot risk, kasi hindi natin, hindi natin nakikita yung mga kalaban natin right now. So, I guess it's the thing na, yun na po yung, ay, parang iba pa rin po yung live na nakikipag-usap ka, pero... Ang magagawa lang po natin ngayon is the online learning. So, so ano mas prefer? Yes, I agree. Mas, mas prefer mas, ko pa rin po yung live. Yung face-to-face, mas preferred mo pa rin. Kahit online na siya, mas prefer mo pa rin nakikita yung teacher mo and yung classmates. Yeah, mas masaya pa rin. We are still social beings, eh, no? Yun pa rin po ang um punot double nito um how about dito uh, for me i'd rather have um to- uh, talk with the teacher and talk it's online because if uh, i have a hard time if you're studying because i need someone to explain it or elaborate it more understand it so it's also better with classmates because uh we have uh, other company and yeah I agree. Depende yata sa bata, no? Kasi there are some kids who are really very sociable. And yes. my son is one of them. He gets his energy from being around other kids, no? So that's why um, itong summer, I enrolled him in a small group tutorial. So okay. parang there's a sense of parang mini classroom pa rin, rather than him just you know, giving him the worksheets tapos aralin niya mag-isa. So kailangan niya ng ganong interaction social, even if it's just on screen. I think it depends on the kid. Uh, yung panganay ko naman, uh, who's uh, a bit of an introvert, would rather study on his own. Yung supplemental na lang yung makinig siya sa teacher, kung pwede lang, panoorin na lang yung live recording. 
So I think it depends on the kid and their preferred, yeah. you know, their, their temperament, their personality. Yes, I agree, ma'am. And how about for Fatima? Okay. Um, for the safety, to purposes. this for the safety purposes, now in my pandemic, I prefer the online because kahit na online nakikita pa rin natin yung mga teachers and classmates natin kahit na sa bahay lang tayo kasi medyo pangit ng konti yung ikaw lang yung nagse-study na ikaw lang isa kasi parang mabilis ka mag your medyo lonely ka tapos para mabilis ka makatulog or yo uh, maging lazy ka konti so it's more fun it's more fun talaga if online siya. If for the safety purposes now, mas I prefer the online kasi kahit online nakikita pa rin natin yung teachers and yung classmates natin. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your answer, Fatima. I agree, no? Talagang kailangan pa rin natin ng kasama, groupmate, or mapagtatanungan ng sagot, or sasabihin mo lang, hindi ko talaga alam, bored na ako. Kaano pa rin siya eh. It's the essential part of schooling, kumbaga. So thank you for your answers. Um, do you have any questions or slide? Um, I so far I don't have any question uh, for, from our um, from the students and our parents and I, I would say na um, with their insights I really learned a lot um, especially yung two words galing from um, Fatima Nicole yung love and support and so. It really um, hits the spot talaga na we as a pair, as parents, uh, we really need to do everything that we can um, and with as much as or with, with all that we have to support yung students natin, especially with education. And yun nga, uh, tulad ng sinabi ng mga uh, um, kids um, uh, um, that uh, Yung social aspects pa rin talaga yung hinahanap pa natin. Although it really depends sa temperament, katulad nung sinabi ni Mami Candice. But at the end of the day, um, yung social aspects like communication, um, yung visual senses ng mga bata, yung um, auditory senses, is that yun, yun yung mga kailangan din ma-develop at the end of the day. Hindi lang yung mga concept and yung knowledge and so on. Yes, I agree, one hundred percent. Siguro po, um, may we ask uh, the parents first for their final advice for their co-parents, and if also you want to say something to the teachers in the school admin, maybe you can share uh, any final words, po. Ma'am, Ma'am Candice. I think to siguro for parents na mga nagaalanganin pa rin, kasi no, I, I know a lot of my friends, no. Uh, who are not even sure if they're going to enroll their kids this coming school year. And these are parents who can well afford to do so. But nag-alanga rin sila kung matututo kaya ang anak ko you know, with this you know, uh, new mode of uh, learning and studying. But um, I, my encouragement sa mga parents is to, first of all, be well informed. No? Um, there are reputable sites, no, such as the DepEd or even your school's uh, website, no, where you can know more about the learning continuity plan, no, of your academic institution. Kasi pag alam mo yon, you will know what to expect, no, how the uh, modules or the teaching is going to be delivered. You can foresee, no, uh, what's gonna happen. At the same time, uh, you can assure your kid, no, kasi the, our kids are looking up to us now, di ba? Mami, anong mangyayari sa amin? So, if you cannot project that confidence, no, sa harap nila na kung sasabihin mong hindi ko rin alam, di ba? Lalo sila matatakot, no? They will feel insecure. So, your child has to see it in you that more or less, you know what to expect because you have done your research. Siguro yun ang, ang na, numero uno. Tapos siguro just be open-minded. I know that uh, many parents are siguro not, not everyone is techy, no? Um, or siguro kung techy man, just the usual lang na messenger and chat. But there are other learning platforms available uh, online that are free that you can actually explore, no? Na pwede mong gamitin for your child. You don't necessarily have to use it, but you can teach your child how to use it para to supplement no? uh, his learning in the, in the classroom. And finally, siguro find a support group. 
Uh, maraming parents ngayon na kailangan ng uh, suporta ng kanilang mga kaibigan na kapwa magulang din. No? So you pull your resources together, um, share your um, experiences and your apprehensions just so you'll have that sense of community na alam mo na you know, hindi ka nag-iisa. No? Lahat tayo mga parents, we feel this apprehension. But as one of the teachers said kanina, no, let's, let's embrace this because there is no other way. Uh, adapt or perish. So if we don't adjust to the new normal, we will, you know, we will die, kumbaga. No? Learning will stop. And we don't want that to happen. Thank you, Ma'am Candice. Um, Ma'am Gurley. Okay. Um, I agree with Mommy Candice with when she said that uh, we have to be open-minded, okay? So, uh, we have to accept the fact that this is the new normal. So, hindi po ito sinasadya. This is, re everybody is adjusting. The parents are adjusting. The school, the government, and of course, our children are adjusting. Now, we have to uh, stay positive kasi if we are going to be pessimistic then what 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 will happen to our children so we have to trust second we have to trust our school that they really are making their best to of course to give still the quality education that we are really expecting for for our children and uh we continue to pray that this pandemic will ano will go through na mawala na siya kasi nga uh, we really cannot do the face to face if according to the government that uh if we don't have vaccine so ika nga ni DOH together we can beat covid so if we can beat covid we will be going back to normal. So uh, let's just support each other. Let us support our school. Let us support our children. And I know uh, this pandemic entails financial matter. But uh, since uh, ito talaga, kailangan nating uh, magstay positive talaga that we can really uh, make this and we can get through this uh, COVID pandemic. Kasi this is really a, a challenging times for the uh, education system of the Philippines. But I know and I believe that uh, everybody is doing their part. And in support to our children, let us just collaborate with each other and support each other. Para naman. And also, uh, stopping is not a choice because I still believe and I do believe that uh, learning is a lifelong process and we cannot afford to let our children stop just because we have our fear of this COVID. In a way, there is this online uh, distance learning. So we don't need our children to go to school. Uh, yun lang, we need to adjust. Kailangan lang talaga natin mag-adjust and adapt to this new normal as what Mommy Candy said. Thank you po and God bless to all of us. Thank you, Ma'am Gurley. And yes, Miss Mommy Catherine, any last words po? Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe I, sh I will start my uh, this what I'm saying uh, with this message for the teachers and the administrators. No, uh, maybe maraming parents naman ang mag uh, mag -jo join sa akin when I say na we fully trust the administrators and we fully trust the teachers that they are doing their best uh, in adapting to this new normal. Uh, bilang guro ako at yung asawa ko, alam namin na hindi madali ang ginagawa ninyo. Hindi madali. Kasi hindi madaling maghimay ng curriculum, identify the important, and identify, from there, identify the most important, and to create modules, it's not easy. So, ano po, uh, saludo kami sa mga pinagdadaan na ninyo. Yun nga, magpe-prepare ka lang ng new school year, doon sa traditional setup, ay matrabaho na. E eh ito, nagpe-prepare ka sa isang buong school year ng bago. <laughs> Entirely different. So, uh, we, we, ano, parang, uh, we cannot 
we can just imagine the difficulties na pinagdadaanan ng mga teachers ngayon para lang makapag-prepare para sa mga bata. So, you have our full trust um, at naniniwala kami that you are doing your best. On the other hand, sa side naman ng mga parents, let's all prepare for the birthing pains. It will not be a smooth sail, definitely. No matter how uh, ready our teachers say that they are, uh, no matter how um, much preparation that they did, um, there will be birthing pains. Kasi this is something new for everyone. Eh. So yung kamukha nung sinabi kanina uh, ni Sir Tito na ang pag, pagpaplano ay meron kang dulo in the end, ito hindi mo alam kung nasan yung dulo. So yung amount of preparation, hindi mo rin alam. You, you cannot guarantee that it's enough. Kasi everything will be very fluid kasi lahat nitong online distance learning ay susubukan lang natin lahat ngayon. So, prepare for the birthing pains. It might be a bumpy ride as the entire country uh, jumps into it. But uh, kailangan, uh, handa lang tayo. Huwag tayo masyado mag-expect ng, uh, ng pagiging perfect. Kasi even nga yung traditional learning natin, hindi naman perfect pero we have been doing that all our lives, di ba? And yet, meron pa rin mga glitches at saka challenges along the way. So, uh, tayo, yung mga magulang na katulad ko, huwag naman at huwag tayo magdeman masyado ng pagiging perfect dun sa preparations na ginagawa ng mga teachers. They are doing their best, but ano, since bago ito lahat sa atin, kailangan uh, bigyan natin ng leeway yung, yung part na yun. Kasi, remember... Lahat naman ay nagulat sa pangyayaring ito. So yung mga teachers, yung administrators had to embrace, di ba? Had to embrace all the tasks that they needed to do in a matter of months. Samantalang yung traditional learning ay ginagawa na natin ever since, di ba? So kailangan mas, uh, mas may ano tayo dito, mas may pag-intindi na gagawin. So kamukha ng parati nating nababasa uh, na PM is the key. Uh, sa mga online sellers, ang kailangan natin tandaan ngayon, patience is the key. Okay? Patience is the key. Hin walang, walang magiging perfect. Whose who's, uh, forte is this? Anyway, kaninong forte ba ang online distance learning na ngayon lang gagawin ng nakararami? At um, so, tandaan natin, patience is the key. Uh, kailangan maka-adapt tayo, kailangan maging understanding tayo, kailangan maging flexible tayo because the entire education system for at least this school year will be very fluid. Uh, maraming changes na mangyayari pa along the way. So, ang pinaka-importante na tandaan natin, patience is the key, puso is the key. So, kung may puso tayo, <laughs> Mas may intindihan natin yung challenges na haharapin ng mga anak natin. Kung may puso tayo, mas may intindihan natin kung may pagkukulang man na mangyayari on the part of the teachers or on the part of the school. So, pasensya sa lahat. And then, everything will will be all right, I think. So, patience, puso, and of course, we pray for each other. That's all. Thank you so much, uh, Mommy Catherine. Um, I would still like to hear from our uh, students since kayo naman talaga ang rason why we are doing all these things. Um, can we just hear your words, your advice for your um, classmates or for your, for your parents also? Please let us know what do you want us to hear. Yes, yes, Fatima. Um, my advice for my ano, co-class co-students is let's just have fun ngayon na online kahit na hindi natin hindi natin face to face kasama yung teachers and classmates natin. Let's just have fun kasi some of us first time to gagawin. So, wag muna tayo maging negative. Let's just think positive and have fun. Second is let's also reuse yung mga school supplies natin from last school year, yung mga, yung mga magagamit pa, let's reuse them para din maka-help tayo sa ating parents na mag-save mag -save pa ng money for the things that we need in the midst of this pandemic. Thank you.
Thank you, Fatima. Thank you so much. Very good answer. Let's just have fun, di ba? We don't know what the future will hold. Um, di naman tayo naghahanapan ng mali dito or we're not in a race, di ba? We are here to help each other. Very good um, advice. Uh, what about the others? How about you, Vito? Uh, I would just say to my classmates that we should all just adapt to the, to the new normal and get used to it uh, slowly. So, okay. adapt to the new normal and try to uh, stay calm and just en like Fatima, uh, just enjoy the time you're just quarantined and try to get used to this new normal. Correct. Let's accept, diba? Accept and um, just be grateful for for what we have right now, no? It may it may be different from what we're used to, but yes, um, it's still we're still continuing our studies. Yun ang mahalaga. And for Isa, uh, may we hear your last word? Aside from enjoying, po, we also have to learn how to focus and know when it's the time to chat and use all those social medias and when it's the time to learn and study all those things. So, yun po. And then just stay calm. Huwag tayo magpanik kasi kakayanin natin ito lahat. Yes, very well said. And with that, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and sharing with us your insights. Um, in a very candid way, actually. So, thank you so much. And sa mga nakikinig po sa atin, I hope you learned a lot from all the speakers today, especially from our students, from the kids who will be going through this. Narinig niyo na po straight from them. And I hope we um, join together to support each other. Sir Sly, any final words? Yes, um, again, um, thank you sa mga parents natin and sa kids. Um, thank you for the insights and for our viewers. I know that we have been enlightened. Marami tayong natutunan today. And I hope that we would be able to apply all the learnings that we have sa um, this coming school year, especially for our uh, for my co-parents, uh, to love and support our children, collaborate with the teachers, and um, always get in touch with the administrator para po we know what are the steps to take, what are the, the things to do that we uh, need to follow in this um, coming new normal for our uh, for the next school year. Yes. Thank you so much. And um, we will just have a um, last announcements. Um, that you know. So... Um, I just show my screen right now. Yes, and for all our participants, the 353 who stayed with us until the end, thank you so much. Um, for those who would like to get a certificate from this webinar, we will be posting the link right now. Hold on. Um, ito po ang aming feedback form. If you um, want to let us know ano po ang inyong mga natutunan or ano ang inyong tingin sa aming event this afternoon. Just fill that out and in five minutes you will get a certificate in your inbox. Okay? So again, maraming salamat po sa lahat na nag-join. I, I hope marami po kayong natutunan ngayon. And yes, of course, ang pinaka-importante is we apply everything that we learn. Magtulungan po tayo. Let's love and support each other. And together, we will succeed. Maraming salamat po for joining Big Pond Enterprises. And this event is brought to you by Nuwadu in partnership with E-Tutor Champs together with Philippine Women's College of Davao and Pasig City Science High School. And this is Micaela Ramos together with Mr. Stai Escobia. Um, thank you to all for joining us today. Um, we hope to see you in our future webinars. Thank you, Bo, and yes. good. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, and keep safe.